Yeah, and for me, it's a 50-50 match. Obviously, on paper, Joshua Filler representing Germany, and the bookies do have him favourite, but for me, there's not a great deal in it. Omar plays a lot of tournaments in America, and he goes very deep in, Germany. in them, and he's won a lot of tournaments, so... Uh, for me, it's all about the other two guys on each team. It's not representative, but if the lag is anything to go by, the Germans might be unbeatable. Yeah, it doesn't get better than that. That was a, a great lag. And those people who haven't seen Christoph, he's a brilliant player, very underestimated. I've seen him play quite a lot in Germany and uh, he's difficult to beat. Yes, because it has to be said that there are some giants in German pool other than Joshua Filler, people like Ralph C.K. and Torsten Homan. Joshua chose Christoph. Yeah, he's obviously got his own reasons for why he's, he's chose Christoph, but I'm pretty sure who, uh, whoever he picks will be very happy. disturbance there even before a ball has been struck Perfect start, what a break. Making the seven in the corner, the one in the side, and the two ball ends up right over the corner pocket. The only problem being the three ball. Doesn't go in either corner. So we may see him have to play a combo with the three ball or try and get good position. This isn't easy. was a pretty poor shot there from Joshua. Them shots on new cloth when you're playing with a lot of top spin, they kind of top on themselves once they hit the rail and the cue ball will stop quickly. You need to play them with stun. You just caught that a little bit too thick. Extension, please. In something of a pickle here, and that's why they're taking the 30 second extension. Yeah, this is a real tough combination shot. Well, he's played a brilliant shot there, got the snooker. Most people, when they play this shot, play one rail to hit the three ball, where there's a lot more things can happen if you hit two rails. It's going to try and kick the three ball up towards the green six and stick the cue ball in behind the four or five. Just like that. Not the easiest to kick shots, cue ball being so close to the side rail. He's got to be careful that he doesn't scratch it in this. Foul shot. Well, that was, wasn't far Contact. away, but Bottomed. even if he did hit it, he would have left it over the pocket. Let's start the clock, please. And now, what a chance for the Kuwaitis to draw first blood. Ball in hand, all of the balls on the table nicely spread. Yeah, and I rate this guy, Omar, very, very highly. He doesn't miss much. And to be fair, his partner played brilliant as well in the last match.
perfect position on the six. Natural angle to come straight back down for the eight. It looks like it's going to be first blood. Take a wait. Alawadi, that nice cue action, the pause going back, the release of the grip. He's got one of those techniques where if tension does descend, he can cope. Can wait. The first it's record? the early blow. Yes, of course, it's a race to seven, so no reason for the Germans to panic. But Kuwait will be delighted with the way that rack went. Joshua Filler on the opposing side. He's completed the holy trinity of pool. World nine ball champion, US Open champion, and world number one. But playing in a team, in a pairing environment, is very different from being the man as an individual, Chris. Yeah, it's totally different when you're playing doubles or you're playing a team event. There's a lot more pressure on you and you're playing for your partner. So uh, you're not playing shots that you would play for yourself. And the interesting thing is that, very similar with Jason on my team, is that you've got to remember that they can't reach certain shots because they're left-handed. And obviously I'm right-handed, so you have to think differently when you're playing. So to Second break in rack two, Omar Al Shaheen. Leading by one rack to now. I'll tell you something, Phil. This table is breaking great. The wing ball and the one ball are going straight in every single break. Yes, Carl Boys mentioned that in the in the previous match. It's like night and day. Yeah, you've just got to be careful here. A little, little cut into the side pocket. These side pockets are tighter than normal. They may not look it on TV, but take it from me, they are. Well, he could have done with that running a little bit more. He's OK, he can bridge over the four and five, but if the cue ball had come out maybe another four or five inches, it would have been perfect to just stun off the rail and back out for the four. He's got to be careful he doesn't hit the balls with the rest here. Yeah, because those rest heads are quite light, aren't they? Yeah, I'm not a I'm not a fan of them to be honest. Obviously, playing snooker, I've been used to the the X rest, as I would call it. The problem for me with the rest is it's it's very high up where you're queuing, so you're kind of swerving the cue ball all the time unless you hit the centre of the the cue ball. That's just about perfect. He's going to draw this cue ball roughly to where it is now to leave a nice angle on the eight ball. Come back down for the nine. Good performance so far, Phil. No alarms, no fuss. This is overrun, I think. A little bit too far, but he's, he's OK. Should make this. Let the queue go through. Didn't the second. attempt to be 
too careful or tentative in the nine ball went and 2-0 Kuwait there's Joshua Phillip on the left hand side and his rock in life is Pierre Filler, who is just over his shoulder there, watching intently as she always does. Married couple, and boy does she supply all the support he needs in so many areas of his life. Yeah, she goes everywhere with Josh. Wherever a tournament is, she's there and supports him all the way. And Peter's a very good player as well. She plays on the European Ladies Tour. When you think about it, it's a, a different generation, these two. Christoph Reiches has been playing the game for 25 years. Joshua Filler is only 23 years of age. Still further, reckon. Yes, it's mad what he's achieved in such a short time, obviously. Leading to now. Winning the World Championships and the US Open and becoming world number one in such a short space of time is unbelievable. Good break, but lost the cue ball. A little bit fortunate to have a, a straight one ball into the corner. By no means easy. You just tried to hit that a little bit too hard, got a bit of top spin on the cue ball, and that's why it's landed in the corner. And This isn't an easy shot. He's gonna try and stop the cue ball dead, I believe. Well, what a result he's had there. Cheers. He threw his arm at that one, Phil. Well, the cue action was so jabby. Hardly any backswing. It was the complete opposite of trying to see you play that shot. <laughs> I, I might have missed it by a bit further. Oh, and that is an absolute mile away from Josh there. That was a long, long way for somebody like Josh. He won't be happy with that. Such a talented player, talented potter. This was about three feet away from the pocket. And what's more, the gap is there. The gap through to the one. Well, out of the two players that are playing for Kuwait, this will be my pick, who I wanted to pop this ball. It's got a very nice cue action, looks very solid. Well, another miss. That's three misses in a row, as he got lucky. I think he's left it on at first glance. It's a very thin cut. I remember in our game yesterday, Phil, Jason had a similar shot to cut back into the side pocket and I thought it was easy. Extension cut. I got out of the chair and looked at it and it, it, it was very, very thin. You can see there he's looking at trying to bank the one ball. If he does, he's got to be careful because that cue ball will be tracking towards the same pocket where he's going to try and pot this one. It's close to going in off. A little bit more pace, it was straight in. And the bank was always narrow. Always. Yeah, the problem is we're playing on Rasson tables, which seem to bank slightly lower than, a, let's say, a diamond table. So you've got to be careful. Oh, what a nice flick that is. What a flick that is. I think his heart was on his sleeve there for a couple of seconds. I 
This one's a little bit short. Well, he smashed that in and got where he could have got by just rolling that four ball in. For me there, I think he had to either bank the four or play around the back of the six with the cue ball. Yeah, and that was an edgy one. Long way away. And I can't see Joshua Filler missing this. He needs a spark, doesn't need to get going. This could be it. Yeah, straight in the out of the pocket. Great shot there from Joshua. He doesn't miss much, so when you do get your opportunity, you've got to take it. Extension is required to put on the end of the queue. It eats into your time. Hence the shot was played just on the first beep. That's a nice shot there. Got the cue ball away from the rail and Josh is gonna just punch this off with a little bit of top left hand spin. Get the cue ball over to try and leave a nice angle to come down for the nine. Doesn't want to be straight. Two balls missed from distance by Kuwait, and ultimately it cost them. They're still in front though, at 2-1.
we're still in the early stages of this second round match in the World Cup of Pool. It is Germany up against Kuwait. Germany's leading. It's trailing 2-1. Germany break. breaking off in the fourth rack, trying to draw level. I'm quite fortunate there, Joshua. Didn't make the intended ball on the break, but he'll take it. See the eight ball getting flicked into the side pocket there. But while you're at the table, you're in control, and that's all you can ask for. Once again, good news, bad news. Made a good bank on the warm. Didn't intend to make it. But it's a good job it went in. Otherwise, it was right over the pocket. Nice shot there by Joshua. And that's the thing with Filler, isn't it? It's not just the fact he plays all these really good shots. He takes no time to think about them. It's just instinct, natural instinct. Yeah, he's an unbelievable player, really, really talented. If there was kind of a, a downside to his game, I probably would say it would be his kicking. But that comes with time and experience, and I dread to think how good he's going to be in another five years. Well, playing on his own in an individual context, I don't think a 20-second shot clock would affect him at all. That's how quick he is. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised at playing this shot. I think they've stuck this two ball up. Oh, he's just pulled up in time. I don't think it goes. Very fortunate there. I felt the two-rail kick was a better shot for safety. He's been very lucky there. I was going to say one more revolution of the two ball, but in fact it's probably half a revolution, maybe even a quarter. That's just in the nick of time, as you say, Chris. Just in the nick of time. Yeah, is he going to try and just flick up behind the three ball? You've got to be careful here. This isn't an easy shot. He's played it well. And I'm guessing the jump cue is going to come back out again unless it has got the gap between the six and nine. Well, this is a tough shot. No natural angle. He's got to play this with left hand spin in between the four, the five, and the six. Oh, what a shot that is! Great shot. I think he's going to be in trouble again after this one. Yeah, lots to hide behind. And another good shot there from Joshua. I think the natural angle is exactly where the side pocket is. He's going to have to come up the left-hand rail where he's looking. And he's got to draw this. The adder he hits is the less chance he has of hitting it. Good shot again there by Omar. Some good safeties and good kickings in this rack. I was speaking to uh, Jason yesterday, Phil, and I was saying Christoph, to me, has a look of uh, Kevin Bacon. I don't know if you can see it. I can actually. 
Bollard shot. Bollard. But might not be bringing home the bacon in this rack. No, that was very unfortunate there. He, he played a really good shot and he got a... Start the clock, please. A bad flick. He's played a brilliant two ball there and that is very unfortunate to hit the six and scratch in the corner. Ball shot. Shot. Gotta be a little bit careful here, doesn't want to land straight on the four. That's just about perfect. A little bit surprised if he screws this, he should be playing this with spin. Yep, nicely, nicely on the five. What a miss that is. And look at where the cue ball landed. That is unforgivable. Well, we've seen some stuff today, haven't we? Some stuff you wouldn't comprehend. Well, I think that's going to join... Uh, that shot's going to join me on the worst misses ever. He's just spinning it with so much side. I mean, the bad shot was from his opponent to not land the right side of the five ball. But he had such a, a vast amount of area to land in. And that's going to hurt the Kuwaiti guys. Pool, there are mistakes and blatant errors. We've seen Germany. one here, and that's why Germany have tied up the scores at 2 2. You simply can't keep giving Germany these opportunities because they will pounce. Isn't that right, Pierre Fella? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's a rough start for Germany. It didn't really look good for them, but somehow they kept fighting and they are back in the game, I guess. <laughs> back in the game and that missed shot there from Q8, I mean, that could prove very costly. Oh yeah, that that was a really, really big wreck if Germany would have lost that wreck. So it's like a early decider, but uh, yeah, I'm glad they, they snapped it off. <laughs> <laughs> They're still smiling, the Germans. Joshua, he's still smiling. Oh yeah, Joshua is always a positive guy, always smiling, always having fun, and I think that's a big part, sitting in the arena. Look just, at him. Yeah. He's loving it. <laughs> yeah, just be positive and uh, try your best. That's all you got to do. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely fantastic advice. It's two all, and Chris Melling in the commentary box, he might be playing uh, Joshua next week in Gibraltar. Yes, we had the, the draw for the World Pool Masters earlier on today and it really did throw up some intriguing ties including the fact that the two Americans in this tournament are going to be up against each other on an individual basis yeah I think I've drawn Sanjin Pelovic is it from uh, forget where he's from you have indeed is it Perlovanovic that's Sanjin Perlovanovic that's the one I remember him when he was about seven years old and he had long hair and he couldn't get him off the table. He was like a mini Jason Shaw. Perfect break off there. Decided to use the cut break of the Germans. And when you do use that break, the one ball flies over the corner. But there's always a chance that you might not make that wind ball because you're not hitting the full part of the one ball when you break. How do you like that for position? 
that's a brilliant shot because if he had landed to anywhere on the left hand side of that two ball he had no angle to get back up for the three that is a brilliant shot he's played there Short. He's leaving this three ball a lot thinner than he intended. You don't expect Joshua to miss this though. Perfect position on the five. I mean, this is where it gets me, Phil. The, the, the talking about where to leave the cue ball, and they've basically got five stun shots. I mean, there's no reason to speak whatsoever. Yeah, there's no point in making things complex when they aren't. The key is to try and make things as simple as possible. And really, running these balls for these guys is just... Daily occurrence. Extension, please. 100 times over. Yeah, you should be getting them 100 out of 100. Maybe feeling a little bit of pressure. There has been a few mistakes, but. How much movement was there on that shot? <laughs> I cannot believe that ball's just dropped in. Phyllis problem here, potting that one without laughing. Wow, what a snatch at that shot it was Jeremy. from Christian Christoph Reiches, but at least he pots the winning nine ball. And for the first time, Germany go in front. They were 2-0 down, remember? Now, though, they lead 3-2. Yeah, and there could have easily been 4-0 down. Just look at the movement, if you get another chance to look at that, that was unbelievable. Joshua there waving to Pia in our studio. When you see a player do that though, Christoph Rogers almost pulled his shoulder out of the socket. It doesn't bode well for when the pressure's really on towards the end of a match. Yeah, it works, but it works in kind of two ways. You're happy that the ball's dropped, but... Joshua will be thinking, oh, wow, I need to get him straight in every shot. There's Pierre watching everything. Now, this is the ugly ball that Reicher spotted. Oh. Yeah, for those of you who are watching at home, that is what you don't do. Well, in snooker, they call it a twitch, but that was much more than a twitch. Yeah, we, we call it a chicken wing <laughs> in the pool world. Yeah, the back arm was well out there, wasn't it? Over the years, we've seen some extraordinary capitulations to nerves. I remember the South Korean in Shanghai. His back arm was shaking so hard because of the, the tension of the situation. And it's easy to sit here, but when you're out there under the cosh, anything can happen. Yeah, and also the great Hall of Famer Nick Varner from America. He used to shake like crazy. Very lucky again, the cue ball was going straight in the side pocket. And I think he's on the one ball. Just look at this cue ball, it was going straight in the side pocket. Gets kicked away by the five. Well, maybe he's not on the one. One thing he has got, though, is a straight bank into the corner. I think you've got to play the bank if, if you can't cut it in. Well, maybe you can cut it in. I 
Nice shot there from Christoph. Yeah, and much stiller on the shot as well. And another, that's a poor shot, that is from Josh. He wanted to screw straight down and leave a 4-9 combination, and I think he's still going to go for the 9 combination because he can send the cue ball around the back of the 8 onto the top rail and play to hook him behind the 6 should he miss. Extension called. The key when you're playing these kind of plants or combination shots is just pick a point where you want to pot the 4 ball and therefore the 9 ball should go in. So pick where the 4 you want it to pot it to the left hand of the pocket or the right hand side of the pocket. And just use an imaginary ball in front of it. Yes. Tim it Jeremy. did not West touch Zero. the sides. That was a no oh. doubter from Christoph Reichers. They have won four racks in succession, the Germans. Joshua Fuller pumped up. 4 2 now. Kuwait have fallen behind. Okay. There's something about Germany and World Cups. What about this one? Right into the heart of the goal. The 4-9 combination from Christoph Reichers. And four is the number for Germany to now build on. The seventh break. Team Germany to break. Leading 4-2.
Another successful break there. Two balls on the break. Three balls straight in the corner. And the four in the top right-hand corner. Not an easy first shot, though, on the one ball. If he's feeling confident, he may even go for the bank on this one ball because it offers perfect position on the two. Cutting the one ball in, it's very difficult to hold position. Yes, especially with that extremely lively top rail. He's got a good safety shot, though. If he flicks off the left-hand side of the yellow, three rails in behind the green six. You called it, Chris. He almost played it. Yeah, there was a massive target to get behind there. The, he had the five ball, the two ball, and the six in the way, and would have been very unfortunate if he'd left that, but he has left a jump shot. Extension, please. Needs to be careful. If he hits this too thin, the cue ball's going to fly straight in that top left-hand corner. Very hard, Phil. There was no reason to hit that so hard. That's a few times now they've played jump shots, and he's, he's absolutely cracked that ball there. And the game has completely changed from when Omar missed that simple shot in the side pocket. Although there were many thrills and spills in between. It was just the same in the previous match. The Italians were 2-0 up. Fabio Petroni missed a routine six. And they were never quite the same after that. Yeah, and the, the way I look at it, Phil, is when I'm playing is if it's a race to seven, if I get seven chances and I lose, then it's my own fault because I've had seven chances to win the match. That's just my my views and my mentality on on the game. Well, I must say, Chris, even though it was a little bit of a test last night for Same. Same your nerves, I thought yeah. you, in particular, put in a good performance. Looking to consolidate now, no doubt, this evening. Yeah, and no, I'll, I'll be totally honest, Phil. I've, I've never seen Jason miss so many balls or play so many bad safeties. But we won, and that's the main thing. And it could be me tonight who does that. Well, he's a phenomenal partner to have. If you both hit top form at the same time, the engraver could start working now. Yeah, I certainly wouldn't pick anybody else in the world. Extension call. Christoph Arachis. Surely won't be too nervous on this one. Germany wins the rack. It is now five consecutive racks for Germany. 5 2 the lead. Yes, thank you very much. It's five racks to two then to Germany. I've got uh, Arben Ocean back up here with me. Mm. Arben and Germany just starting to show their class now. Yeah, uh, definitely. I think Christoph does a really good job and I think sometimes it's quite hard to play with Joshua but in a good way because you know he's uh, one of the best players we have in the pool world right now. So it's a little bit tough to be his partner because uh, you know he will play almost a perfect set so you want to prove that you're the right partner in the team. Absolutely. And I think QA, they're just mi missing too many chances and eventually the Germans were going to punish them. Yeah, I think now they made a real, like, uh, two not really necessary mistakes. Uh, also, the jump shot uh, was, uh, it was an easy jump shot to get over the, the ball, but uh, to jump the cue ball off the table was really not necessary. Would this be the best comeback of the week if Kuwait were to turn this around at five racks to two? 
Well, they have to, they have a lot of work ahead uh, if they want to win this match and turn it around. I think they're breaking well Germany, so I don't think uh, they could win it. Alpine for now, thank you very much. Numerically, Estonia the coming back from 5-1 down to beat Belgium. 7-5 was, was big, but in terms of the stature of the two players from Germany, I think if Q8 were to pull this out of the fire, that would be quite a story to tell. Well, it starts now, Phil. And what a chance this is. Tend to agree with Albin there. I can't see Kuwait winning this match. Because you just feel that there's going to be too many mistakes that come into the game. It's amazing how the pool gods seem to punish you when you make a stupid mistake. Extension called. Alawadi's clothing there was in danger of maybe just raising the pink ball so tucked himself in yeah and they just keep landing the wrong angle I mean this is a simple stun off the rail and back out for the four but when you keep leaving distance especially with some of the balls that they've missed it just gets more difficult well that's a nice shot there from Omar one thing they keep doing though Phil they keep landing the wrong side of the ball so, for instance, when he pots this four, he needs to be low on the five to go up for the six. That's good. That's just about perfect. He needs to leave the cue ball on the kitchen line, as we call it in the American pool world. The big difference between nine ball and snooker fill is that would be a terrible shot if it was a snooker <laughs> table. But that's absolute perfect position on a pool table. It's all about leaving big angles and leaving the cue ball in the centre of the table. The pool, you use a lot of spin on the cue ball and snooker, you're taught to hit the cue ball dead in the centre. That's not his greatest shot. He could have done with that cue ball and it being near the bottom rail. If this is straight. He might have to just pop this and play for the side pocket or the corner. That's a good shot. Nicely on the eight in the side pocket. Although, Chris, as you've said, you have to treat these side pockets with the utmost respect. Nice shot there, straight in the centre. And this nine ball to get within two. Yes, and the dry break cost the Germans there. The Kuwaiti stepped in and they've reduced the deficit. So we were starting to write their obituary a little too early, I think. Now, of course, with the winner breaks format, they get to break in the next. Yeah, and you're never out of it with winner breaks. The Kuwaitis could break the next three, four racks and have absolute rollings. It just depends whether it's your day or not. Joshua Filler there on the, the left-hand side, the, the German star. He's one of those players, when I first saw him, you just knew he was going to be phenomenally successful. He's got that X-factor, hasn't he? The ability to pop the the spatial knowledge of a pool table and what to do and when to do it. Yeah, and it's not just that, Phil. It's the speed that he does it at. He completely intimidates a lot, a lot of players who he plays. You know, no matter how much experience he has, I've, I've seen him playing for money in America and in the pool clubs, and, you know, he just absolutely destroys everybody in a matter of, of minutes sometimes. 
actuating the plug. Can Kuwait apply a little more pressure? Well, it didn't even hit that break there. That was a real poor break. No power. And for me, you don't deserve to pot one hitting them that soft. The four bobbled and the one nearly went in the side, but what a chance this is for Germany. You're right, that was quite non-committal, wasn't it? Not the, the break off you would expect from him. Yeah, what he was trying to do is make the wing ball and control the one ball on the break to put it over the corner, but that is the problem if you don't make the wing ball, you leave your opponent straight in. I'd much prefer to hit the break hard and kind of guarantee the wing ball. Like I said earlier, when you're at the table, you're in control. And that's the point. I control Exceptional break all very well if it's working, but against top-class opposition, you can't afford to leave them in. That's right, he's landed a little bit awkward on this too. Christoph doesn't look comfortable. Oh, look at the twitch there. He's in the centre of the pocket, but did he see his back arm, Phil? He's done that two or three times now. This is the second round, by the way. What about if he gets to the final? Yeah, and Joshua's been fortunate there, and that's all come from Joshua's mistake. Look at the arm go. Did you see the head movement, the arm movement at the back? You've got to keep very still on them shots. And that seemed almost involuntary. Well, I'm very surprised he's played that like that. He could have actually played a combo into the top pocket, kicking it, but I don't think he looked. And he may have got away with this. All depends how close the three is to the six. He has got a good safety. He plays it very slow. He can stick the cue all in behind the six. But it is dangerous. Well, I guess that's one way to play it, Phil. If you don't know what to do, give it a good old crack. Time waits for no man. <laughs> Look how awkward he's left it. It is dead straight and he's got to play it so slow. You've got to rely on the table rolling straight here. This isn't easy. What a shot he's played there. Brilliant shot. Well, after a few mistakes that he has made, he's certainly made up for it with that one. Couldn't have put that cue ball in a better position. That's not bad. He wants to leave the cue ball just a yeah, roughly there, just above the side pocket. So therefore he can pop the six, play two rails down for the seven. It's not his best shot, he's okay, but now he's going to have to use a lot more power to bring the cue ball over. If he had a bit more angle, would have made it easier. Well, he's got too much into that cue ball and once again, that was Omar's bad positional shot. He should have been further up the table and more towards the corner, towards the right centre pocket. Is he going to play the bank? 
He's made it. What a shot. What a shot that is. Didn't hesitate. Even using the bridge. Didn't touch the sides either, Phil. Straight in the middle and that will certainly settle them down. They are not going away, are they, the Kuwaitis? Germany only in front by a single racket, 5-4. We've seen some tight and tense Thanks. pool this afternoon round as the ten. second round of this World Cup of Pool continues. Trailing by five racks to four. At one point here, we thought the Germans might pull away to a comfortable victory. Not anymore. It's 5-4. And Kuwait are breaking off with their goal to get back onto level terms. Great break there. Didn't split nice, but he made a ball in the side pocket and absolutely perfect on the one. Six ball making its way into the side pocket there and how do you like these ones? Once again, Omar's over it that a little bit. Could have done with being straight on the two. He's going away from the three ball. Well, he's played that well. He's played that perfect.
And again, another poor shot from Omar. Dead straight on the four. That that is that is playground stuff. He should have been on the bottom rail and he would have been perfect. He's played a lot of slack positional shots in this match. And now his opponent's overran that one. Does it go? And if it does go, where does the seven go? Does it go in the side pocket? Well, the five flies in, doesn't it? Yeah, he's got a lot of options here. Can push the cue ball through, play the seven in the side. Oh, what a twitch that was. There's a lot of nerves out there. His backswing is almost non-existent. Yeah, well, he's using about a 13-foot pool cue, I think. You get to look at his, the cue he's using. It, it, it's at least... at least 66, 68 inches long. Wow, what a beast that is. But he'd say, OK. Calling the extension on the the last ball. It's this for parity. You know, I could see that coming. There was something about the the whole surroundings of that shot which suggested to me he wouldn't be able to cope. Well, I've said it for a long time, Phil, and I'll say it again. Why did they hit the nine ball so hard? Germany. Winston. Well, I'm sure Joshua Filler can't quite believe it. We can't. It should have been 5-5. Five, five. Absolute certainty, it seemed. Instead, it's 6-4. Yeah, he, he's tried to smash the nine in with bottom right hand spin off play the cue ball off three rails and there's no need just just pot the nine roll the nine in you can see there he's trying to screw it his body moved and the cue moved and that's unforgivable and when you miss that kind of shot uh, and eventually go on to lose a match that's the kind of image that's playing before your eyes as you try and drop off to sleep <laughs> with difficulty what what a mistake yeah we, we've all missed them phil and we'll all miss them again but it's horrible when it happens to you but i mean that that is one of them shots where you just got to pop the ball you don't need to play a position and he's just tried to smash it in for some reason and we might be proved totally incorrect here, Chris, but the amount of times when you see a nine ball miss like that, then the other team gets up, smashes the balls and has a roadmap. Yeah, absolutely agree with you, Phil. I mean, they're going to break now and you can virtually guarantee he's going to make two or three balls and he's going to land absolutely plumb. Thank you, Lamp, Germany to break. <clears throat> Leading by six racks to four. I'd like to see a six all here, Phil, just to see how much twitching goes on. You're a bad man, you are, Chris. <laughs> two balls off the brick, plumb on the two. <laughs> we knew it was going to happen, Phil. It's written in the stars. safely say I cannot see them missing well I can't see Filler missing Christoph's been a little suspect though with his technique well more than a little actually 
Well, it just shows you what pressure can do to you, and there'll be millions of people at home watching saying, how's he missed that? But until you're out there, you don't really know the pressure that's Extension, on you. Please. <laughs> How much did he move on that, Phil? Oh my word! I don't think I don't think I've ever seen anybody move that much. I'll repeat: you're a bad man, Chris. Laughing, <laughs> laughing that way. Yeah. I bet your Phil is laughing. One thing Filler won't be doing is standing immediately behind Christoph Reinches because he might get a black eye. That back arm might be all over the place. Yeah, they'll, they'll be delighted to get through this match. They've obviously made a lot of mistakes and against a lot of teams, they would have been out. Surely he's going to keep his head down and push the cue through nicely here. Well, even then, there was a hint a hint of nerves. But now Christoph Reinches and Joshua Fuller can breathe. They are through by seven racks to four. Fuller, the world champion, US Open champion, world number one. He's been there, done that. Playing in a team environment, though, can be very nervy, as his partner showed. But they're into the quarterfinals.